Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Friendly Academy. Now in this episode, I thought of discussing about different endpoints types in API Gateway and how to choose the correct one for your application. Now, if you want to build a REST API with AWS, so one of the key services that you would use is this API Gateway. Now API Gateway, you can go ahead and create an API and then you can create HTTP APIs, WebSocket APIs and REST APIs and so on. And here, if you want to build a REST API, you probably choose the REST API or HTTP API. HTTP APIs, they have like low latency, but uh, some features are missing. So if you want that fully fledged features of API Gateway, then the REST API would be the ideal case. So imagine now you want to build a REST API with throttling and you know other features. So you chose uh, REST API and then you go ahead and build. And when you create a REST API, you can provide your API name and then you have to select the API endpoint type. Now there are three options here, regional endpoints, edge optimized endpoints and private endpoints. So how do you decide and pick the one that is suitable for your API? And that's what I want to discuss in this video. So essentially, choosing private API endpoint type is pretty straightforward decision. If you don't want to expose your API to outside world and keeping it only accessible for your resources in the VPC, then you would use private endpoint. So when you select private endpoint, look what happens. So in this blue color block, it says private APIs are only accessible through VPC endpoints for API gateway. So if you want to access this private API, then you have to create a VPC endpoint in your VPC. And this is an interface VPC endpoint. And then you have to whitelist this VPC endpoint in the resource policy of your API gateway. So that's what you need to do. So essentially, if you have a private API, then your resources like Lambda functions in your VPC can access that. But in order to access that, you need to create a VPC endpoint. So that is a ENI or Elastic Network Interface. Here it is. And then you create an ENI that is pointing to API Gateway. And you can attach security groups and everything at the ENI level. And then your Lambda functions or EC2 instances or whatever the internal resources that wants to access your API gateway should be in the VPC. And then they can access your uh, private API through the interface endpoint, the CNI. And here in the API gateway level, you can create a resource policy. And in that resource policy, you can whitelist this interface endpoint ID. And after that, you are able to access it. So choosing private API endpoint is a straightforward decision and it's easy to make it as well because if you don't want to expose your API publicly, then the default option that you should use is the private API endpoint. But how about the other two, edge optimized and regional? If you go to the console and try to select edge optimized, here I can give the API name, description, and the endpoint type, then the IP address type, IPv4 and dual stack. What about if I select uh, regional? Nothing changes. Just the endpoint type di is different. And there are nothing uh, visible changes, at least from the console. So what are these two? And how they differ from each other? Now, if you choose Edge Optimized API endpoint, the API Gateway service connects your API to a CloudFront distribution. So it's a CloudFront distribution here. And as you may know, CloudFront is a CDN from AWS and this AWS service is a global service and it operates in all the AWS edge locations around the world. So with that, you get a benefit. So what's that benefit? If your clients are distributed across the globe, let's say you have clients from America, New Zealand, and you have a client from Sri Lanka. And if all of them wants to access your API, then you can probably use this uh, edge optimized uh, API because since there's a CloudFront managed by API Gateway, by the way, remember that this CloudFront is not managed by you. 
So whenever you choose this edge optimized type, it creates or the API gateway creates that CloudFront distribution and it is, a, it is managed for you. So you can't do much customizations at the CloudFront level that is created by API gateway. And as a matter of fact, you can't even see this CloudFront distribution in the CloudFront console. So it's all managed by API gateway. So when your clients are accessing your API, they could be from different geographical areas. So this one from uh, US, another client from New Zealand, and they will first access the uh, CloudFront through public internet. And they will access this CloudFront distribution from an edge location that is closer to uh, them. For example, in US, there are uh, edge locations closer to US. And if the client is from New Zealand, there are edge location closer to New Zealand. So they will only have to connect to that edge location. And from there on, the request will be connected to the API gateway through the AWS backbone network. So it is pretty much stable and fast as well. But on the other hand, if your customers are only from a certain region, let's say they are from uh, US, and then you probably go ahead with a regional endpoint. So your users will directly access the API gateway endpoint. So this is a regional endpoint. And the region that you're operating may be, let's say, US East 1, North Virginia. So your uh, users are also from the North Virginia uh, region. So I hope it makes sense. But uh, there are a few things that you should consider in this case. Now, one of the concerns with edge optimized API endpoint is that this CloudFront that API Gateway creates is managed by API Gateway. And you can't see it, you can't edit it, you can't uh, do any configurations. Say that you want to change the cache policy or update the cache policy, or you want to connect another origin to this uh, CloudFront distribution, you are unable to do it because you can't even see this one, right? So that's why it's more recommended or it's more uh, flexible is to use regional endpoint even if your users are distributed across the world. So you can use uh, this regional endpoint, but have a custom CloudFront distribution in front of it. So this is your custom CloudFront. You create a CloudFront distribution and then you control all the origins to it. So you set up an origin to your API gateway. And if you want to connect another resource, let's say there's an ALB, application load balancer, and you can connect that as another origin as well. So it's really up to you to manage your origins and you can set up the cache policies and it's all up to you. And your users, they can connect to the CloudFront distribution and then they will enjoy those uh, latency benefits as well. Just like in the edge optimized API type, but here you have more control. And hey, can I have a edge optimized API gateway and have a CloudFront in front of it as well? Yes, you can do it. What happened in this case is, you know, your custom CloudFront is also distributed across all the edge locations around the world. And this guy also have another internal CloudFront and it can take more time to resolve the uh, routing. So the recommendation is if you have a custom uh, CloudFront in front of it, go ahead with the regional API gateway. Okay. So when would you use the edge optimized API? So I would say like if your use case is quite simple, and you just want to serve your clients across the world and you don't worry about uh, updating your cache policy or adding any other origins, then you can just go ahead and use uh, the default uh, edge optimized API gateway or else like you can go ahead with regional API and have more control over your origins. So this is what I want to discuss with you. And if you guys have questions, post it in the comment section. I'll try to answer. Thank you.